Luke chapter 12, verses 35 to 40. Be dressed, ready for service, and keep your lamps burning. Like servants waiting for their master to return from a wedding banquet, so that when he comes and knocks, they can immediately open the door for him. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them watching when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will dress himself to serve, will have them recline at the table and will come and wait on them. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them ready, even if he comes in the middle of the night or toward daybreak. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Tony, thanks uh, for doing the reading. Uh, I want to ask you to think about uh, Christian discipleship or what it means to be a disciple uh, of the Lord Jesus. I think there are probably lots of different ways to, to answer that. But I take it tonight that Christian discipleship uh, takes place in what could be called the in-between time. Uh, disciples of Jesus follow him, uh, learn from him, and serve him in the in-between his first coming and his anticipated second coming. And in our passage this evening that, that Tony just read, uh, it's Luke chapter 12, uh, verses 35 to 40, Jesus speaks to his disciples about the in-between time. Uh, we could say, in fact, that all of chapter 12 of Luke, all of it is in some sense about the in-between time. Uh, if you have a Bible with me, uh, look down at, for example, verses 1 to 3, because this whole chapter is one in which Jesus warns, but also encourages his disciples about life in the in-between time. Uh, verses 1 to 3, they must be on guard against religious hypocrisy. Verses 4 to 11, they don't need to doubt their security in God's care, even if they go through trials. Verses 4 to 11. As they go through life, uh, they must not covet financial gain. Verses 13 to 21, because their heavenly father knows they have material needs. Verses 22 to 34. So discipleship in the in-between time, well, it is hard, but disciples in the in-between time, they are protected, loved, provided for, and cared for by God. But here's the thing, the, the in-between time will not last forever. It will not go on unendingly. Verse 40, the Son of Man uh, will come as the Old Testament prophet Daniel saw, and as the Lord Jesus, who is the Son of Man, whom Daniel saw, as he now declares in verse 40, the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. And so it's for this reason, Jesus declares, Christian discipleship in the in-between time is characterized by a necessary watchfulness, Look down with me at verses 35 to 37, but it, 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 it ends there also in verse 40. What is this watchfulness in the in-between time, in between Jesus's first appearance and his second final appearance? What is this watchfulness? Well, Jesus gives two parables. It, first in verses 35 to 38, and there's a second one in verses 39 to 40. And both these parables deal with household servants 
and a master who has had to go away for a time, but is, is expected to return. And I want to have you see at least three features of this necessary watchfulness. But, but please stay with me to the end because there is a final surprise. So here's the first of the three features of necessary watchfulness. It's there in verse 35. Watchfulness is to be ready for service with lamps kept burning. Uh, literally, verse 35 reads, gird your loins. Uh, a male's outer garment was rolled up and tucked so as to be ready for action so that he wouldn't trip over them. Uh, like the ancient Israelites waiting for the Passover, they were told to gird their loins ready for a deliverance, a rescue at any moment. So disciples of Jesus are to be in constant readiness. See, discipleship is, is a life marked with a, how can we put it, rolling up of the sleeves rather than lounging in pajamas. Lamps kept burning pictures careful attention to both the oil in the lamp and the burning of the wick in the lamp. Both necessitate careful attention, watchfulness. Careless servants would run out of oil or let the, burn burn, uh, let the wick burn up wastefully. Now, stay with this parable or word picture for a moment more. We can, we can get the meaning and the application. Uh, Luke 12 alone calls us to action stations to watch out for religious hypocrisy, to, to watch our heart's desire for wealth, and to avoid falling into the fear that our Heavenly Father doesn't care for us and doesn't, doesn't care for our needs. But there's more. Later on in this chapter, Jesus extends the implications of these first two parables in verses 41 to 48. And in that passage, he'll say that faithful watchfulness, well, it actually involves our relationships, the way we treat our brothers and sisters. Cruelty and a lack of compassion for one another are actually marks of poor stewardship and a lack of watchfulness. It's a failure to follow our master's commands. But secondly, look with me at verse 36, because we see a second feature of necessary watchfulness. Watchfulness is to keep our lamps burning, to wait for our master to return from a wedding banquet, so to open the door immediately upon his return, verse 36. See, apparently, uh, a wealthy master may well have left his home to attend a wedding feast that would have lasted many days. But he will expect his household servants to take care of things for his return. And a servant's responsibilities include their daily tasks, uh, to take care of the cleaning, uh, the livestock, meal preparations, husbanding the, the wine and the crops, and ensuring they anticipate their master's arrival, even if it's in the middle of the night. Jesus' point is clear for us to see. Watchfulness for us in the in-between time means that we do today what we are called to do today. <clears throat> what are we called to do? We are called to love the Lord our God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. And our neighbors, we're called to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. So with our time, our money, our bodies and skills, we are, as Paul instructs Titus to teach his folks, we are to do good. And additionally, not instead of, but additionally, prayer, meeting with one another, taking the Lord's Supper together, uh, heeding the scriptures, heralding, pronouncing the gospel uh, to outsiders. That's what disciples do. But we do all these in the here and now with eyes wide open, anticipating Jesus's second coming in history and time space events. Right in the immediate here and now, 
we are forward looking and anticipating people. I guess you could say, no, I want to say we are always Advent people. We are always second coming people. Authentic and faithful discipleship is never anything else. But thirdly and finally, verses 38 to 39, watchfulness continues even not knowing when the master will return. Uh, we live now in the light of Christ coming again, even if we don't know exactly when that will be. If it seems Jesus is tarrying, which is an old word meaning waiting or delaying, that, that must not deflect our attention to be ready. Whether, you can see it there in verse 38, whether it be in the middle of the night or towards daybreak, be ready, be alert, be watchful. Jesus uses a parable in verse 39, um, not suggesting he is a thief, but to call for preparedness, not to be lazy and indifferent in the face of his, what seems to us, his delayed return. The promise, verse 40, is unshakable, even if we don't know the exact hour. Now, here's where I could end, because I suspect most of you would say, yeah, I know all this. I, I, this is not new. This is what excites me. Well, if we know that what Jesus means by watchfulness in this in-between time, and we think we understand what this, that might mean for our life, nevertheless, there may be something which might surprise you surprise you. Uh, I don't mean that you and I are surprised by how challenging it is to be watchful. We don't need to be told that. We know it's challenging. We know how draining, draining it is to keep on loving, keep on forgiving, keep on serving. We know how draining it is to keep faithful in our marriages as well as being single. We know how tiring it is to keep on evangelizing in a very indifferent and hostile society. I don't mean that we're surprised at all about how hard it is to stay awake and alert when it's been such a long delay. We, we know that. We know it would be easy to fall asleep or to stop working as the patterns of history you know, injustices, pandemics, wars, and violence. We, we know all that, and, and yet Jesus has not yet returned. Now, none of that should surprise us. The surprise is this, and it's there in verse 37 and verse 38. And it's a little phrase, it will be good, says Jesus, or literally, it will be blessed or the servants who do what I want will be blessed. Jesus promises, promises that when he returns and is welcomed by his faithful people, he will be so delighted and thrilled. He will turn the tables and he will serve a banquet meal to them. Jesus' pleasure and delight will be so great that he will throw a celebration party for them. Immediately you want to say, well, hold on a second. I thought that we're going to be worshiping and praising and all our eyes and hearts will be on praising and acknowledging him. Won't his people celebrate his return? Won't all the praise and honor go to him? Well, yes, a thousand times yes, but don't miss this. Here's the surprise. In celebration, his heartfelt joy and pleasure are to praise and honor his faithful servants. Doesn't that then begin to tell us tonight what we need to take to heart tonight? Even the hardest and, and most grueling watchfulness will not be wasted. It's not in vain. Even 
staying awake through the night in discipleship, which may mean for you particular demands at, at home or at work, even in this church fellowship and in society right here and now, is a wakefulness. I don't know if you, if you can sense what Jesus is saying. You're being awake, you're being watchful is hugely, dare I say it, appreciated, esteemed by Jesus. He doesn't just command you to be watchful. He does do that. But you see what he's saying is, when I come back, if I find you doing what you're supposed to be doing, however hard it is, I will throw a party for you. I, I will celebrate your faithfulness. See, others... Others may not see or know now what you do for him, but he always does. He doesn't forget. And he looks forward to celebrating with you. It is good or it is blessed for these servants whose master finds them watching when he comes. It will be good or blessed for those servants whose master finds them ready. Even so, Lord, help us by your spirit to be this kind of servants. Amen.